Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use Project Ty or simply Ty from now on to make your life so much easier when working with microservices. Now this is one of those projects from Microsoft that in my opinion at least has really gone under the radar. It's very powerful, very good and I don't think enough people are using it or even know about it. So hopefully through this video you will see how this can literally be a game changer. Now without any further ado because there's quite a lot to cover just go straight into the video. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, hitting the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So what do I have here? So here I have a couple of projects. I have an API, which is the bog standard weather forecast API, returns the weather. And then I have a Blazor app, which is the server side version of the Blazor app. So it runs on the server and it has all the basic pages, but instead of returning weather from a hot coded thing here with a randomizer, it actually calls that other API and it gets the weather from there. So it's a proper setup with two services communicating with each other. And you might have more and more and more and maybe databases and whatnot. I want to keep this digestible, so let's only do two projects. And you could totally run these two projects here. And Rider makes it very easy to run separate projects through the same ID or even the .NET CLI. And if I move this here, you can see that I can go to fetch weather and this is getting the weather and the weather is picked up from here from that API, as you can see. I mean, there's no log messages, but it's coming from here. Let me prove this by turning this off and then going to the website. And if I try to refresh that, this will go, I'm sorry, mate, I can't do this for you. So clearly that API was getting called. Now let's see something, because I'm working locally here and what I have is an app settings.json. And usually what you would have is if you're in dev, you would have, let's say the base URL here in uh, the settings and then Maybe you have another one for development. And then when you push to prod, the app settings.json has the prod one and then the dev has the dev one. But then if you want to run this in Docker with Docker Compose, then the settings get all over the place and you have to do so much management around that. And it's just so messy. And just for the avoidance of doubt, this uh, URL is being picked up here in the program.cs when I'm setting up my HTTP client to call that API, the weather API right here and I'm getting the value from this. This can get out of hand. And in my experience work with microservices, this is usually the biggest pain point. All this management you have to do around configuration and secrets and everything is just such a pain. Even if you work with Docker, with Docker Compose. Now here's Project Ty's promise. It's gonna take all that pain away and just give you a command back to play with. Let's see that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the terminal. Here we go. As you can see, I am at the root of this in the solution level. And all I'm going to do is paste this command here, which will install globally the tool Microsoft.ty. Ty is the project we've been talking about. And once I do that, and the tool is very quickly installed, you do need, by the way, .NET Core 3.1 currently to do that. Uh, once I have that, I can do Ty, and then I can do things with Ty. The first thing I want to do with Ty is I want to do a Ty init. This is very cool, by the way. Ty will automatically detect that I have a couple of .NET projects here, go in the CS proj and understand what the version is and everything, and then produce a manifest for me. If you've worked with Kubernetes before, you know what a manifest is. If you don't, let's see what that is. So here is what that thing, that command produced. Now, I don't want to call this project Ty experiment, so we're going to rename that. But effectively, it scanned the solution, it found the two CS Prod files, and it created the two services. A very minimal looking YAML file. Now let's shape this up a little bit because I don't want these to be named what they're called. This API should be called Weather API, and this app, let's just call it Blazor app, why not? And then the name of the whole thing should be called Thai Video, because this is for my Thai Video. So once I do that, I can go back to the terminal, let me do a clear and I can say tie run. That's it. And now what this will do is it will run, build and do everything around it and run my two APIs and give me also a dashboard. Let's click that and I'm going to bring that here. And as you can see, this is from tie and I can go and view the logs of the two APIs or the two services here running. Uh, this also supports Docker images. So if you want to spin up a database, it can totally do that. It also creates bindings here, so automatically I can call this or call that, and as you can see, this works. Now, obviously, we cannot call that weather forecast API because the setting 
doesn't point to the thing we wanted it to point because obviously this changed now with Ty. But here's a very cool feature from Ty. If I stop this by doing Control C and then clearing this, I can go back here and I can do a few things. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a few bindings. I want the ports to not be randomized. I want them to be static. I can define this here. I can go here and say bindings and then say port and specify the port being, I don't know, 7001 or just 7000 for the API. And then I'm going to do the same for the Blazor app. And this is not all. What I want to do is I'm going to go back to that app project that is pointing to that API here in the config and I'm going to add a NuGet package and I'm going to search for tie here, enable pre-release packages and here's the package microsoft.tie.extensions.configuration. I'm going to add that to the app project and once I do that I can now delete that thing. I don't need it and I can simply say builder.configuration so you need access to the configuration manager and then dot get service URI and this requires now the name of that service in the Thai manifest. For us, this is the weather API. And that's it. Now, if I go back to that terminal and I do a Thai run again, it did the thing. Let me show you. So now here's a dashboard again. The APIs are running on the ports I specified. You can enable SSL and whatnot if you want. But in any case, now I can go to the Blazor app here and now it is fetching data because internally it has been configured by Thai to communicate that through the service discovery that Thai supports. This is mm, that's beautiful because you no longer have to manage all that. You can just configure it in that manifest file and Thai will do the rest for you. And it supports hot reload and other things like that. Now, here is the kicker. Here's the interesting thing. And you get other things like a bunch of metrics if you want to for your services and if you want you can have replicas so run multiple services of the same type here it's such a cool project now let me just stop that what i have here let me show you once this stops and maybe let's just create a new one here and make this bigger for you clear and let's do a cube ctl get pods now i am running kubernetes locally through docker on this machine in fact, if I double click that, you should be able to see that my Kubernetes here is running. Kubernetes is a container orchestration and most companies work with microservices. The overwhelming majority actually will use this to deploy and run the services because it has so many cool features. If you want to see more about Kubernetes, please let me know down below because I'm more than interested in making that type of content. It's such a cool tool to know how to use. Now, what I want to show you too is that here in Docker Hub, in my own account, I have no Docker images. Now, Kubernetes, in order to run the services, requires Docker images from somewhere, then it pulls them and it deploys them in pods. Here I have effectively a blank Kubernetes, nothing special. And I have already authenticated using Docker login against the Docker Hub instance that I just showed you. Now, what I can do with kubectl or kubectl configured to point to my local Kubernetes instance is I can go back here to this Thai YAML file and I can say registry and I'll say Nick Chapsas and this will add Nick Chapsas effectively in front of my images in Docker Hub to push the images. And by the way, like I said before, if I wanted to have like a Docker image here as well, I could totally do something like this, you know, Redis. I can have Redis like this pulled from an image. It doesn't have to be a project local here. It would still run through Thai. Now, Thai, once I added this registry Nick Chapsas, if I go here and I say, again, kubectl, if I do get pods again, I have nothing running here. What I can do is go back here and do Thai deploy. This is a command in Thai. And yes, it will automatically create Docker images for my project, automatically push them to Docker Hub, and then run the commands necessary against Kubernetes to deploy it. And I did nothing. That's everything I did. So you can extend on it in so many ways. Do you want to have ingress? You can. Do you want to have other things? You can. Do you want to have replicas? You can. Thai makes it so, so easy to work with it, especially for .NET developers. And now this is pushing the weather API. It might take some time because my upload speed isn't great. So I might just cut when this is done. And now uploading our Blazor app here. And again, if I go back to kubectl, 
no pods running yet, but I did say deploy, so it's pushing the images now. And the first one has been pushed, so I should be able to refresh here. And a few seconds ago, here we go. We have the first image pushed, and it should be anytime now. Here we go. Blazor app pushed as well. And as you can see, this has now been deployed to the cluster using kubectl. And if I go back, my pods are running. One is running, one is starting. And it's running. This is amazing. And if I do kubectl get service, I have the services. There's nothing externally exposed yet, but I can port forward locally if I want to. Normally, you'd have a load balancer and an ingress. It can handle that as well. But to port forward here, let's just do get CVS and get pods. And what I want to do is I'm going to say, well, really, only the Blazor app is what we access. The app itself can access the weather API behind the scenes, so I don't need to expose this IP. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say kubectl port forward SVC and then specify the service, which for us is the Blazor app and then the port structure. So the external will be 5001. Why not? And the internal will be the 8000 here. So if I do that, you can see forwarding is working. And if I go now to my browser and I do that, I can access my app and the app is running in Kubernetes and it's calling the API in Kubernetes. This is amazing. And you can see the request, by the way, here in kubectl port forwarding. <sighs> what? This is so good. And if you're done with all that and you want to finish, guess what? I can simply do, let me clear that, tie and deploy. And that was it. I undeployed from my Kubernetes cluster. It's no longer there. If I do get pods, let's go back here to do get pods. No pods. This is insane. Please try this. Give it a go. If you work with microservices, what do you think about this? It's such a cool thing, especially for local development. It can generate tons of things for you. And I recently found out about this, at least what it can do, by a video I saw from Scott Hunter showcasing it. And I was like, I got to try this out. And it's definitely worth trying. Please try it. Please try to give some feedback. It's really cool. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.